Sharon Long, Emmy nominee for The Great. You took over as costume designer for season two. So where do you begin when you join an ongoing show like The Great that already has like such an established look and a very specific look as well? Um, well, I didn't kind of, I didn't sort of do a, a complete clean sweep to start with I looked at the way that the characters had started off and and the kind of growth and then hopefully followed it on from um the designer who went there before me because she did a great job um how familiar were you with uh I guess Russian history uh <laughs> <laughs> Russia not as familiar as I am now <laughs> <laughs> but um, I did, I mean, I did do a lot of research. I kind of plunged myself into it. But, um, you know, at the time when, when I was approached about the job, I didn't know that much about it. Mm -hmm. So in your research, was there anything that like just, uh, you know, you, you clocked or you, you were like, oh, like that, that's like a, a good idea that I could incorporate in, into season two, like something, something I that think, just stood out? I think probably um textiles more than anything else um the kind of the range of textiles because the the russian empire was so huge so the influences came from far and wide and i i i think that um it was quite important to incorporate that in the look of the film um mm -hmm. there was so i mean there's a there's a coronation gown which was written as um a traditional Russian sarafan so that that was a kind of whole development process and and a lot of research went into that to look at what what was traditional Russian clothing at the time and before the French courts kind of um the style took over the courts of Russia mm -hmm. I mean that coronation gown is really elaborate it's like gold metallic like and she also has that really huge crown so uh, how long did did all that take in real life to make um not as long as it should have done because we, <laughs> because it's because we're working on you know because it's television you the the time's kind of a little bit truncated but um it went back and forwards sort of design the design process probably went backwards and forwards for about sort of six weeks the research was longer but um it was we were in full lockdown so it was slower than it should have been uh, making the the there was two crowns actually there was the headdress that came in and then there was um the imperial russian crown so there was two sort of different kind of groups of people to talk to about designing hmm. those and jewelers to speak to well season two uh, uh covers catherine's pregnancy and she's basically yeah. for the whole season so what are the yeah. the, the challenges of month pregnancy throughout <laughs> the season and then kind of I guess you you would have to loosen the corset yeah I, I don't um, know what goes into all that <laughs> well we actually what we did was we 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 started off with a pregnancy corset so we decided to do her realistically so women at the time we would have carried on wearing the corset and um there's sort of a lace-sided corset so that you can extend them as 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 the woman gets more and more pregnant but the, the because um Elle's pregnancy wasn't real it meant that she was wearing a kind of prosthetic bump and the only problem was that the corset was making it move around so we ended up reversing and putting the we we had a corset that would work on top of a pregnant bump but for the costumes it worked better if we put the corset onto the actress then the bump on top so that she was supported at the back and had the right framework but the bump didn't move around because it was just kind of it was just sort of slipping during the day and <laughs> causing us you know a few problems really <laughs> um, and we got bigger, bigger and bigger bumps and bigger and bigger corsets until about the nine month stage where we kind of left the corset behind a bit yeah that sounds very complicated uh <laughs> And, and maybe not the most comfortable <laughs> for her. I don't know. I mean, I have to say, um, Elle's never complained about the corset. <laughs> I think you, I think she's, she's got she's really a pro. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, she goes in, in, into labor in the eighth episode, uh, which was your uh, submission, uh, Five Days. And that one has, she's wearing a lot more like nightgowns, a lot of, 
I guess, uh, traditional maternity wear, I guess you could say, and softer fabrics. Yeah. And, and I mean, uh, a, lot of, a lot of them are based on a, it's something called a robe de volant. So it's mm -hmm. a sort of um, a, a, a kind of dress that women would wear around the house, sort of informal, really, because, you know, I'm sure you can imagine wearing a corset and a very sort of uh, huge panniers and um, quite complicated sort of structural dresses all day would have been a bit too much. So sometimes the, there was a more relaxed, you know, mm -hmm. opportunity to wear something. So we used that really. So we just developed what was already in existence in history. Mm -hmm. to make it. I, I love the contrast in that episode because that's one of the episodes that her mom played by Jillian Anderson is in yes. uh, and she is the one wearing like the humongous gowns the yes. large skirts and she's kind of like taking over the joint <laughs> so what well, went into her designs because she's also like an interloper coming in and she's kind of like sneering like sticking up her nose at all of this going on um, well, I mean, the, the kind of idea is that she kind of, you know, takes up too much room in the court and, and Gillian in actual fact is is very petite, so she's not a sort of looming um, person. So to give her that kind of presence in the court, um, we used sort of size and colour really. So her panniers uh, go out quite angularly at the sides and she's kind of takes up quite a lot I mean, she has to move through doors sideways and things like that she's making an impact really um mm -hmm. and and it's at the time when uh Catherine is feeling quite sort of vulnerable because of her pregnancy and also excited to see this mum and you're expecting something different to kind of something warm and friendly to come out of the carriage when she arrives and it's not what you get at all which is um telling i think <laughs> it, it's kind it's of like how, how you want to like impress your your parents yes <laughs> yeah like, like you don't get the reaction you want and she's kind of it's kind of like she's she's about to give birth but she's kind of like infantilized again in the presence of her yeah. mom yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly and that was the idea that it was that kind of that feeling that you get that most people get when they go home to their parents is that they become a child again so it doesn't matter how important catherine is She's mm -hmm. still a child in her mother's eyes. Mm -hmm. um, I got to ask about the baby shower. You do no right. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the baby shower outfits were just outrageous. A lot of pastels and yeah. pink, just baby blues and yellows going on. And, and Peter's outfit was also crazy. So uh, what was your approach to that scene? Um, I approached it with the, the other he heads of department. We had, um, it was, lockdown kind of can get, quite um I think we were all kind of straining at the leash to do something fun and exciting because nobody was going out or doing anything and um and it was a kind of a, an opportunity really to kind of um you know have some fun so we all I, it was quite um exciting as a department because everybody was making things it wasn't just you know we were designing and handing to the workroom everybody was making bits and pieces for it um it wasn't supposed to be an expensive part of the show it was it was just this party and it kind of developed into something else because we talked all the time and got um excited about each other's ideas and found fabrics that were very economical and then made them into these kind of mad dresses and Lou was sort of building up huge, huge wigs. Um, <laughs> and, and it was it was actually happily, it was kind of towards the back end of that block. So um, it was bubbling under the whole way through the block until they got on set. And it was and it was actually it was quite fun because it's the first time anybody had had a dance for a long time. Oh right, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well it looked like uh, an amazing party and I wish I was there for it but uh, yeah, Sharon it was great speaking with you thanks so Thank much you. for being here uh, we'll see you back here in a little bit